Um, so uh, you've all got the link to our meeting notes. If not, here it is. So um, let's see. Uh, what we have on the agenda so far is um, this is from our last session uh, to to discuss a, a social currency uh, metric a proposal that we talked about briefly last meeting. Um, we thought maybe maybe today we would be in a position where we can we can work or discuss uh, a prototype for a parameterized metric. Um, anything else? Uh, as far as agenda items that people would like. Let's see, maybe we can, maybe we can go through and talk about, um, just kind of review our uh, discussion items from our last meeting. We did, we did do uh, um, an auger install session two weeks ago, which, um, Sean, was that useful to you guys to, for us to, to do that and to kind of flounder and so on? I mean, if it was useful to you, it was useful to us. Okay. Uh, the auger install is significantly easier now. So. Okay. I mean, we were on a path to that anyway, but um, I think we, you know, we had another, I think, it's, I think it was sure, it's good. Okay. Sounds like maybe not so much, but. No, it was good. I mean, but I think, I think people jumping out and doing things is always good. Okay. It's never wrong. Uh, is, is there any interest in blocking up now and giving it another go? Um, I think it, were you on the call? We were, on the, were you on the auger call where we did that uh, last week? It was like yes, eight. I was. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then on the auger call again yesterday, we did another one. Okay. Um, All right. Smoother and smoother. So I think if you just come to the auger call, uh, it's likely we'll probably end up doing installs every time. Yeah. And as we get through the, I, mean, I think we're pretty close now with the documentation as well, where I'll probably do just a video. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. It's it's pretty easy. I mean, it's it's not it's it it works pretty well now. I would say. Okay. So that's um, awesome. Well, I'm a big I'm a big believer in repetition, and yeah. uh, well, I'll just I'll just put it out there. If there's anyone else who wants to block out now or to to give it a go and to flounder together, I'm in. So that's sort of an open offer. And I I think there's something about you know doing it without having the expert in the room that that I think it's useful. It's useful for me anyway. Um, so we did that and, um, I guess, um, maybe we'll just sort of dig into the two things that are on our agenda. Uh, we did talk two weeks ago about a social currency metric and primarily that came through, um, contact of Georg's, I believe. Is that right, Georg? Sorry, I'm having a side conversation here about work stuff. What was the question? Uh, the question is, we have on our agenda a point to discuss a social currency metric proposal. And, uh, yes. and I believe that, um, that you uh, put that on the, uh, onto our radar screen. And um, so exactly what that is, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe you can bring us up to speed. Yeah, I'm happy to um, do that. Let me see if I find the link to the document. Um, maybe. Where? Yeah, I think it's right here. So the social currency metric system, we had discussed it well, a month ago or so in the 
monthly call and then uh, we ask for feedback and so on and so forth. And earlier this week, I met with uh, Samantha and Dylan who are commercializing this idea and they're very willing to share their approach to it. Um, so we yeah, post the so this got together to build out a or fill out a metric template and the idea is to submit it to the um, value working group. Now it's still not finished. We wanted to meet again on Sunday to continue. Um, so if you go to the bottom of the document that I shared. Um, yeah, sorry, can you share it again? I joined later late. Yeah, it's in the meeting minutes. Okay. I didn't share it with the, in the chat, but the meeting minutes is in the chat. So, um, wait, maybe I can share the link that already goes to the correct page. So it really starts on page seven, where it says new model for delivery of metrics. You want me to just share my screen? Maybe that's easier. That's fine. Okay. It's fine. I got it. <coughs> uh, share screen. Okay. So the Social currency metric system is about measuring the value of community interactions and trust. And the, um, so we went through to describe it, what is uh, social currency and what is, uh, why do we- Did you share that document to your or is it? So what? See the document on your screen, but is it shared somewhere? In the meeting minutes. Uh, okay. Yeah. So so we we did this and we got down to. Looks like they did some more work since we spoke. So. We did some of the front end. The implementation part is where we want, where we needed to add more information. And so we don't have the proposal quite ready. I just wanted to make sure it's on your radar and know that it's coming. And if you have early feedback, then I can use that in our work uh, when we refine and advance the metric on Sunday. So I, I open it up to, to you all. Um, what are your thoughts on this metric? I have a question. Yes. Uh, first of all, I think this is, this is interesting. You know, it's, it's interesting to, to measure, you know, some of these, uh, I guess, intangibles, you might call them, uh, in terms of, you know, how strong is the trust? How strong are the shared values? How free is the communication? Those sorts of things. That's interesting. Uh, but um, I wonder, um, and, and this is this is more of a comment on sort of the, the larger efforts of, of chaos. We have tons of metrics uh, on many different things. And um, it seems to me like to be useful, uh, 
people can only manage around a couple of different metrics. You know, they, they call them in, in a lot of communities like key performance indicators. And typically when you're working with groups, you'll find that uh, they manage their activities around just a handful of, of key performance indicators. Uh, they may relate to revenue, they may relate to cycle times, that would be typical. And to me, uh, many of the metrics that we talk about um, would be things that you would look at that would support, let's say, a key performance indicator. If you're a business leader, if you're looking to try to figure out um, where you should allocate capital, you know, across the portfolio of projects. I don't think you would use um, level of shared trust as your key performance indicator, I don't think. Uh, and so what's, what's interesting to me is, you know, if you have a very large number of metrics, you know, how do you search through that, how do you search through that metric space to figure out what are, what are the key performance indicators and what are metrics that, you know, you could imagine almost probably building up like a hierarchy of, of metrics. Um, and, you know, the key performance indicator, of course, would be context specific. Different people care about different things. Um, and I've kind of, I've kind of wondered, oh, for, for a project manager, you know, if I've got a, a population of a hundred metrics that chaos gives me, how can I, how can I know very quickly what are the two or three that are relevant to me, and, and which are supporting? And if I'm a if I'm a business manager, you know, maybe there there's going to be different key performance indicators that I care about. So it's kind of an open-ended question, but this is something that I've thought about. And John just mentioned that he has been talking about the same thing on in his open source.com article measuring the business value of open source communities where he goes through john you probably can talk better about this since you wrote it yeah it, it's mainly you know as i contextualize it in the articles uh, it's really about it being a jumping off point right and they but they are by constituent. Um, I chose that instead of stakeholder because we tend to be a little more democratic in open source development or, or aspire to be anyway. Um, yeah, I have broken this down by state, by constituent. Um, and in the, there's a part one to this too that talks more about, you know, the developers, maintainers, contributors on the actual kind of development side. Um, you did bring up project manager. I don't know if I called that out as a specific um, role, just because I don't always see PMs in, in open source communities. Um, this one is is honestly all on the business side. Like, how do we figure out what the value of these different things are, and what metrics are available in chaos today, or kind of on the roadmap that we think we could use as, as to your point, key performance indicators. So I guess the the whole point of that is. There is a jumping off place for discussion and, you know, we can use it. I, I agree that, you know, every person who's got a slightly different role is going to have a different set of key performance indicators. And I think it's up to us in the community to help guide people towards like, you know, which things should I look at if I want what outcome, right? And I mean, this is a discussion that I'm having over in the Academy Software Foundation side of things too, is like, you know, what constitutes success for a project and how do you get everybody in the team to understand that what constitutes success is on a continuum that changes over time. Um, this is all super context heavy stuff that can't be captured in just, you know, a number. Um, and and I, I don't know how that's helpful to focusing us on metrics of this conversation. Um, but I, I, I guess we could use these to create kind of uh, a, a set of templates that would be available to people over time, like by role and by 
uh, where a project is in its maturity because success looks very different at early stages, middle stages, and, and mature stages. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, I think what we're talking about is kind of the role of like experience. You know, there's going to be an experienced person somewhere who is going to say, hey, if you're a project manager, these are some things that you should care about. If you're a business leader, these are, these are things that you should care about. If you're a software developer, these are things that you should care about. Yeah. And that's, um, so that um, I think is super valid. But I, but I do have a question and that is, you know, there are techniques in the science of, which, which I'm really not familiar with, uh, but I know they exist. Um, things like multivariable regression you know, where you do some sort of a statistical analysis, you know, across a, a slew of different variables to figure out, okay, in this, in this space of variables, which are the variables that, you know, most impact an outcome that you're concerned with? Uh, there are machine learning techniques that people use to, you know, look at a big data space to, you know, to, you know, reduce it down to sort of like one or two categories that are, are most relevant. Uh, and I was just, I was just curious if anybody has heard of people using techniques like that in a metric space like the space that we're working in. I, I sure haven't. I'm just wondering if, if anybody else has or even how you might approach that. I would, I would think that would be the realm of behavioral data science. And, and I don't, I don't know. I don't know any people in that field. I'm sure there are some, mm -hmm. they, they scare me. They're way smarter than me. Right. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know folks in those fields. I am, I am as sure as you are that they, that they exist and there's people who know how to approach this stuff. I just, uh, boy. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess for now we'll we'll stick with what we know. Um, we'll use our we'll use our judgment, and that's that's a pretty good start. Are are do we have any of the installations today generating a a relatively large amount of this type of data? Because if if we do and we're able to make it accessible, that's a reasonable thing for us to go out kind of on our social networks and LinkedIn networks and stuff and be like, hey. We have really interesting data sets. Are there any behavioral data scientists around who would like to mess around with this data and extract something valuable? If we don't have those data sets, then we're not at that point in maturity. But I, I don't know the answer to that. Well, I, I don't think we do. And, and at least from my perspective, I don't even think I could pose the question uh, adequately, you know, to, to ask. Uh, so this is more just kind of a brainstorming idea that's been in my head. Uh, I would I would definitely posit that, you know, if that's a direction that part of the project's gonna go, let's look at what it takes to start assembling that kind of data set, right? Because the next step would be find somebody who can help us ask the right questions of it that relate to the, you know, behaviors we want to encourage, discourage, or behaviors that we want to turn into KPIs that mean something. Yeah. And the starting point is the data set. Yeah. Well, we've got, um, we've got two uh, tools. Uh, we've got Grimoire and we've got Augur. So uh, if we, if we have any open source projects that are, you know, successfully implementing this stuff and they want to start taking a look at the behavioral science behind it, then, you know, that's an interesting conversation that we kick off with that open source community. I just don't know who's using it at, at any kind of scale yet. Right. <clears throat> Georg, maybe you do. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I know Vinod has looked into this and has done some correlation work, um, but I, I don't know. Uh, not from the behavioral perspective. I've done a lot of behavioral analysis. I mean, that's kind of the whole thing with my research up until now. Um, 
a lot of network analysis and this kind of thing. A lot of weighted network analysis. I've got a systematic methodology for doing that. I guess it depends always on what is it that we want to learn. So you can construct these sorts of networks or connections in a billion different ways. And it ultimately comes down to what is the question that you're asking? And how do you qualitatively assess the value of different kinds of interactions? So in open source software, commits are what I characterize as an artifact to artifact interaction. There's no social necessarily that's part of that. The conversation is social. So how do you separate work activity from social engagement or discussion with another person? And what is the significance of those interactions in a particular project? Because I think on some projects, code interactions are as significant for connection as conversations. I think in other projects, it's different. So like most of the metrics on chaos for the behavioral stuff, there won't be a one size fits all. Each project's culture is going to have to be a contextual factor in how people interpret. Yeah, and I guess I would look at that from the standpoint of like, maybe maybe there's some work to be done on setting up that framework, right? Like, here's the different inputs you would see in a pro in a data set or a project. And then you can, you know, teams can assign a weight and then every quarter the teams can revisit what, how they weight things. Yeah. Well, and um, there, is, there are some cues. I've got a couple of papers about this, but if you have a, I mean, you can tell fairly, very quickly if it's a highly centralized project, things like pull request acceptance rates and the number of committers in the core compared to the number of people opening issues. You can get a quick sense if it's a highly centralized leadership group that controls outside interaction, like some web frameworks have done in the past, or if it's just wide open where lots of people contribute. I mean, there are pretty quick sort of back of the envelope things you can do with any set of open source data for a project to, to get a sense of how, it's op how it operates. Um, so you can use the trace data to sort of put it in categories and then make judgments about how you weigh the centralized leadership structure interactions versus the highly decentralized leadership structures uh, interactions. I mean, there's a, there's a, I was gonna say shit ton, but I'll just say there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of work that's been done in this space historically. And I would say a lot of use of behavioral data that systematically mischaracterizes the strengths of social connections and trace data. So it's a, it's definitely, you're through the looking glass, I think, on some of this stuff. And it's important to be careful and not draw inferences that are not there. I could give a whole like one hour talk on this. <laughs> yeah, so going back to the social currency metric system, the key, thing that this provides is taking the qualitative data that is in issue comments, in Twitter comments, in mailing list comments text, and converts it into more easily consumable numbers. So that's what really the core of this system. Um, to, I'll stop here. Georg, what will be the next steps uh, for this? Um... So on, on Sunday, Samantha, Dylan, and I wanted to get back together to describe the implementation of this system. Um, and then I'll put it again in front of you for review and for discussion. Um, Hopefully, the group as a whole says, yes, this is a value-related metric that we want to include, and then we move forward and have it ready for the release. That's great. And Sean, I'll, I'll just say, um, you know, if you ever did want to give a, a kind of a talk on you know, sort of a framework for behavioral analysis and for figuring out which factors in a, in a sea of behaviors, you know, contribute most strongly to outcomes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, for one, at least, would be really interested in, 
in uh, listening in. I have some material that I can share, but yeah, I can do that. Maybe that'd be a blog post about it. That'd be awesome. Let me see that. While you go forward with the agenda, I'll see if I can find that. Yeah, that'd be great. Shoot, shoot. Okay, is there anything else to say about social currency metrics? No, nope, that's it. Okay, uh, the next thing we had on the agenda was uh, work on a prototype for a prioritized metric. And um, so that is a, a commitment that I have. Um, I've just been struggling to find time to put that together uh, over the last couple of weeks. So hopefully over the next couple of weeks, I will have something. And what I'd like to do is just, just do something really, really simple. Uh, and so um, I don't know really what to say other than to, to get, for example, um, a list of uh, commits and then let somebody, you know, plug in a, a labor rate for an average labor rate for a commit and then compare, you know, that, that cost across projects, you know, something like that. So the, the technique I was planning on using was to, um, you know, if I can get my hands on a, on an auger database or, or get it installed myself, I'll just build a really simple little web page that um, that reaches into the the Postgres database and pulls out some data and you know just just puts up a, a very simple web page. So that was that was the idea that I had in mind. Andy, can you use APIs to access all that and like have a web page uh, to display something like that instead of like going for a full installation or accessing using APS to do the integration. Vinod, could you say that again? You, uh, um, your audio cut out for a second. Yeah, so I'm saying like, can you use Augur APIs to access the data and have a display on a simple web page or anything like that? Uh, yes, of course. And um, uh, either the Augur APIs or just an access to the Augur database. Uh, so it doesn't have to be local, it can be remote. Um, just whatever simple. I mean, there's a, the APIs are available on the value instance and uh, um, producing a, I guess, what kind of example are you? Tell me a little bit more about what you're looking for, Andy. Well, very simple. Um, you know, we've been talking about for uh, for value. We've been talking about the idea of a parameterized metric for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And what we've said is, oh, our our technique, kind of minimum viable technique, is export to CSV and load it up into Excel spreadsheets, which is which is awesome. So what I'm talking about is just doing the the next minimal step behind you know beyond that. And I think that's just a, a custom one-off web page where uh, I've got the ability to, to add one thing, and that is my, my average cost per, per commit, and then have it, have it calculate, um, you know, dollar value costs across projects. Simple as that. So yeah. just a really bonehead, dead simple, you know, little web wrapper that, that goes around either the Augur APIs or the Augur database, or it could be Grimoire or whatever is simplest. I mean, I think if you're looking for the, you really want the complexity score that we have. Right? Like that's the, for what that is, you're describing labor cost, which is a function of complexity. So you're going to need to parameterize labor costs over estimated relative labor of project tasks compared with each other. I think. Yeah, it could be, it could be whatever simplest. Um, honestly, if it was just um, mm -hmm. labor cost across um, you know average labor cost for a commit across projects, that'd be great. Just whatever simple. I'm sorry. Which which metric are we talking about? Well, what I, 
what I really would like to do is just, just put up a, an example of a parameterized metric in action. And um, so I'm thinking like average labor costs per commit or average labor costs per, per, per whatever, pull request. Could we, could we do this as part of a, a metrics definition? Like, uh, oh, absolutely. I think that is a, there's a metrics definition that Matt and I are working on, I think in evolution. Yeah, I'm some working groups. Matt is doing one on complexity, <coughs> code complexity. I, I forget which working group it's for though. So I just, uh, I just shared the, uh, the spreadsheet for the metrics version two release. Uh, maybe we could pull labor cost by organization out of that. And maybe, uh, could we do it within that metric? That way, uh, we have a metric we can work on for the release. Does that make sense or am I being crazy here? Oh, uh, that's real fine. Uh, I guess I guess the thing that I'm talking about would relate to labor investment. Undervalue. Labor investment. Okay, I mean, that's. Okay, uh, so, yeah. so if, if it was labor investment, then we would do a revision. So we do a version two revision of the, uh, the labor investment uh, metric, that'd be great. Yeah, because in the, in the version one, we just said, oh, here's, here is hypothetically how it would be done. Uh, so all I'd like to do is just have one concrete example uh, simple as possible of, you know, something that, that runs that, which is a parameterized metric. Yeah, that'd be great. So Sean, if there's a if there is um, a URL of that of that value database where I could get at it get at the APIs or if I could get at the um, the underlying database. Um, yeah, for the for the value stuff, I have. That'd be, to, uh, I've got Parth is finishing the value worker, and I, I just pinged him in this conversation, telling him, "Hey, we're getting pressure on this. Can you finish that?" I've done it manually for a number of folks. But I would like it to just be a worker I can throw at the data because it's pretty, pretty. Um, it just fits really nicely in our data collection framework, and it's not really even collecting different data; it's just calculating something. This data was already collected, so. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'll, 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 I will work. I will update you after I hear from Okay, awesome. So what should we put in the meeting minutes for to summarize the discussion. Well, I think um, I think there's two action items. One is um, for Sean to give me uh, access to Augur APIs or the Augur database. Yeah, the APIs for sure. And then the second action item is uh, over the next couple of weeks, I'll try and take that and just put together the simplest possible uh, example of a parameterized metrics uh, for labor investment. Just a real simple, you know, uh, 
not very styled um, proof of concept. Yep, perfect, thank you. I added it to the minutes. Yeah, awesome. So that's all we have on our agenda. Is there anything uh, anybody else wants to chat about? We may want to uh, we may want to look at all of our previously released metrics to make sure that they're matching the new template. Mm -hmm. okay. So, Garrett, why don't you put me down uh, as an action item to go through and review that? I am doing that now. Thank you. Uh, is there anything, uh, should we be looking ahead to the next metric release or, or upcoming events where we need to uh, start thinking about deliverables and things that we want to have ready? It's going gonna, it's gonna to come up on us here pretty quickly. So I would, I would say our, our primary function right now should be working towards metric release. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the social currency metric proposal, that is the, the one that I champion and that I'm pushing forward for the release. Are there other metrics? Yeah, in the last session, we discussed a job opportunity, which we defined also for the release. Yeah. So let's uh, go and fill in our um, our spreadsheet here. In ecosystem value, I think that is where I propose to um, add the social currency. And I put myself down as uh, <coughs> as championing that. And then where? Hmm, Job opportunity one. Where is that? Living wages, right? Job yes. And I think that is almost ready right yeah that that i rolled it out in the email for the feedback and comments So it looks like we have two new metrics then. Plus for labor investment, the um, implementation. Right. Yep. So job opportunities, uh, Vino, did you say you were the one championing that metric? Yes, go ahead. Wait a minute, I'll go for it. Okay, so look at the template, make sure it's Ready right. for the release. Are there are there any on this list that the just the bar is just really low? It's not gonna not gonna be that hard to put together. Because if there if there are some really easy ones on this list, I I think we should just knock them out. Sean, you might have an idea of which which of these are easy and which aren't. Yeah. Um, but to get to the part of our notes that have that spreadsheet. So in the spreadsheet, we have <clears> some <throat> like um, response time, number of forks. Those are super easy, but I, if I remember correctly, those are already implemented too. Um, yeah, those are already implemented and we can describe them, but they were not metrics enough by themselves. They were part of a bigger metric, right? 
Right. I think they are part of the popularity one or something. So if the if the popularity metric is built upon these other metrics, but these metrics are not defined, then then can we actually understand the popularity metric? Well, number of forks is already defined, right? Is it? Can we have that in evolution. Then then we shouldn't. Then we don't need to define it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I would just delete that. Yeah, and something like commit count by organization. Um, is that, I think that is part of the labor investment metric. I don't think that's a metric we have by itself. Or am I, am I forgetting something? And maybe you remember. Um. Yeah, I think commit count by organization would be part of labor investment. And then maybe we remove that and issue count by organization as well, right? And pull request by organization. Uh, well, hold on, hold on, though. Where are uh, we deleting so lines? Com why, yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't delete that one. You just deleted. Mm -hmm. I so, am. I mean, there, there are composite metrics. Uh, oh. And so there are individual metrics that can exist within a composite metric, but labor investment doesn't, uh, it doesn't handle commit count by organization. We have to have commit count by organization. We have to define that, especially if we're going to use it within a composite metric. So I think that that commit count by organization is actually a filter already on commits metric for evolution. So here, what we have there is commit count by organization is really the code changes right. metric. And what we can do is add a parameter or a filter. No, we already have filtered by groups of actor like employer gender. So employer is by organization. So the metric already exists. Okay. So do we need to, do we need to edit the composite metric that we have that mentions this to point it at the evolution metric. As is. Um, and uh, just, you know, all of those yellow items. Uh, and it, it's, it sounds like our deliverables for the next release will be um, a working example of a parameterized metric for labor investment, uh, organizational project skill demand metric um, that Vin Vinod is talking about, and that would be it. So this labor investment down here, oops, that is uh, almost duplicating, right? The labor investment by, that is the parameterized version of the one above. That's how I, I understand it. And labor cost by organization is the same as labor investment, right? Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So within, within that labor investment release document, we should explicitly point to these uh, metrics within the evolution community or evolution work group, right? I think so.
Okay, so when we review the metric, that is one of the things we can look at. And then job opportunity is really in time back down line 29, 30. Mm -hmm. Job opportunities is an instantiation of earning potential. So I think earning potential has um, job opportunities, average salary, um, commercial options, and subcomponents to it. Yes, no, maybe? Yes. Yes, I think so. Okay. So, so sorry, I, um, Kevin, I know you wanted to find an easy to define metric. And so I was just trying to think through what all of these metrics actually mean in our context because I had forgotten some of them. No, that, that's perfect. What you're doing is uh, exactly what I was, uh, what I was thinking. So and then you were successful. So just sorting, just sorting through them and seeing where it all fits and what we can do and what we can't do on this list. So. Okay. So we have three metrics that we are advancing for the release. Is there any other metric or volunteer who would like to take on a metric? I think as we, I think it's the tool providers go through metric analysis of what they have that would be additional metrics. Uh, I'm not gonna, oh, sorry. Uh, I'm not gonna champion any specific metric, but I'm happy to uh, to write and edit on, on any metric that uh, is put forward, so. Kevin, what is the, what is the date um, for the next metrics release? Uh, I think it's gonna be, uh, it'll be a month before FOSDEM, I believe, so. I think uh, I think the release is probably going to happen January. Yeah, probably so it, first January. part of January. Yeah, review period is in January, so that yeah. we release it before Chaos Con. So we it's have like, to have our metrics in order by the end of December. I think December. Yeah, end of December. Yeah. We have to have it ready by end of December. So then in January it'll be a comment period for review, and then release on the fourth time. Have a good weekend. The so next meeting is then in November the ninth, uh, the eighth, right? Right.
Thanks, I everybody. Think, I think we're good. Have a good yeah. evening, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.